So we see that Yahoo gave their estimate in that $50 range, but based on PE ratio, I see that this could possibly go to $63.29 in the next 12 months. Hey guys, today we're doing the stock analysis on Malibu Boats. Malibu Boats at this current time is at $41.75 a share, and it is a three-star. Yahoo analysts estimate that it could go up to $50.29 a share in the next 12 months. Now, we see when we look at Malibu Boats that this last candle is, and these are weekly candles, it was a big red candle. And we want to see what it is that made Malibu Boats drop so significantly. And so here we have it. Shares of the recreational boat company pulled back on a disappointing earnings report. Shares of Malibu Boats were falling today after the recreational boat company missed estimates on the top line and offered disappointing guidance for the full year. So it was a disappointing earnings report that caused Malibu Boats to drop so significantly. Now, having looked at that, let's take a look at this company. And so, we have Malibu Boats, ticker symbol MBUU. We have their 23 figures in there. So, we're going to look at their performance from 2019 to 2023. And we see that their earnings per share. In 2019, it was $3.15. 3 2020, it dropped two ninety five. dollars That was the COVID lockdown years. But in 2021, it was back up five twenty three. 2022, it was seven fifty one. dollars But in 2023, it dropped again. Not significantly, but to five oh six, and then when we come to the current earnings per share, it's down to four thirty five so the earnings per share has been pulling back a little. We're hoping that the management hasn't changed, so we're hoping that they will write that ship, which is uh, pardon the pun there are boat company, but we're hoping that they will right that ship and get back on track again. In any event, in 2019, we see that they moved from $25.25 to $46.90 in terms of the low price and the high price. So during the year, that was an 85.74% increase. Now in 2020, COVID lockdowns, this stock dropped to $18.73, but it rose to $67.88 for the high price. So during the year, this stock rose an amazing 262 point forty one percent twenty twenty one they were at sixty one dollars and eighty one cents at the low ninety one dollars and ninety four cents at the high that was an increase of forty eight point seventy five percent throughout the year twenty twenty two they were at forty six dollars and ninety six cents at the low seventy dollars and forty nine cents at the high that was an increase of 50.11% during the year. And 2023, 
they were just above where they are now now they dropped to 4156 which is different from the um from the candlestick chart i was showing because it's a day later but they was 4156 during the low here and they were 4260 last year at their low so they went from $42.60 to $65.17, and that was an increase of 52.98%. So we see that on average they've been rising about 50% during the year. Now, they're at a current PE of 9.55, earnings per share 4.35, and let's see where their low earnings per share were in the previous years. 8.02, 6.35, 11.82, and 8.42. Let's say that this stock was to fall back to its low PE of 6.25. That was the low PE in 2022. Times the current earnings per share, 4.35. We could see this stock possibly fall into $27.18. However, it fell to six in two years. One was COVID year, 2020, and the other was 2022. But it fell to eight in two years of which is at nine right now and it fell to 11 one of those years we're already below 11 because we're at 9.55 but let's say it was to fall to 8.02 again 8.02 $4.35, Now that we've looked at how low it could possibly fall, if it were to move back up from here, from a PE of 9.55, let's see how high it could possibly move up. So if we go from eight to 14, that's six, six 11 to 17 is six. This one's higher than six, so I'm not counting. This is three, and this is four. Let's say, let's make it five to make it even. So let's say 9.55, the current PE, plus 5, equals 14.55. Four point three five equals sixty three point twenty nine. So we see that Yahoo gave their estimate in that fifty dollar range, but based on PE ratio, 
I see that this could possibly go to $63.29 in the next 12 months. Not an exact science, but just a guess. So having looked at where the price could fall and how high it can go up, now let's look at the fundamentals for this company. And I'm going to start with the income statement. The company made $684 million. 16,000 in 2019, but after paying off all expenses, they only retained 66 million, 66,000. That's for a profit margin of 9.66%. 9% is not fantastic, it's also not horrible. The other day we looked at Humana, Humana was around 2%. We like, I'd like to see like 20% or so, but 9, 10%, that's decent. 2020, that's the COVID year. They made six hundred and fifty three million one hundred and sixty three thousand the way things were locked down that year. They retained sixty one million five hundred and sixty two thousand for a nine point four three percent profit margin. Twenty twenty one they made nine hundred and twenty six million. 515,000 and they retained after paying all expenses 109,841,000 that was an 11.86% profit margin 2022 they made 1 billion 214 million 877,000 and they retained 157 million 632,000 that was a 12.98% profit margin however in 2023 i didn't dive into their expenses to see where it went but this time they made even more, one billion three hundred and eighty-eight million three hundred and sixty-five thousand. But they only retained one hundred and four million five hundred and thirteen thousand for a profit margin of seven point five three percent. So the amount they retained that year dropped significantly. The amount they retained after paying the expenses. Now, if we move down to return on equity, that looks pretty impressive. It dropped in 23, but in 2019, it was 30.41%. 2020, it was 23.54%. 2021, it was 28.82%. 2022, it was 30.69%, but in 2023, it dropped to 16.97%. Let's see if that gets back on track in 2024. Now, debt to equity. We like that under 200%. And in 2019, it was 114.55%. 2020, it was 82.52%. 2021, it was 94.88%. 2022, it was 65.77%. And 2023, it was 50.37%. 
So their debt to equity is pretty decent, pretty good, which is signaling to me that their balance sheet will be good as well. We want to see current liabilities below the current assets, which we see for every year. And we want to see total liabilities below total assets, which we see for every year. So that's pretty good for the balance sheet. Now, this company does not pay a dividend. Changing capital stock. I generally like to see them buying back stock more than selling more shares of stock. I prefer if they buy back shares all five of those previous years. This company didn't do that. Every year with a minus symbol in front signifies that they bought back. And no minus signal signifies they sold more. So in 2019 and 2021, they sold more shares of stock. But in 2020, 2022, and 2023, they bought back more shares. I'm going to leave the change in current and long-term debt because we already covered that with the balance sheet. But, and generally, I look at the free cash flow heavily because I want to see if companies have enough free cash flow to be giving out that dividend that they're giving out. In this case, Malibu Boats does have free cash flow, but also they're not giving a dividend. So that is not a factor. But their cash flow, free cash flow, is about near their net income. And actually, in 2023, it exceeded the net income. Now, what is their book value? 30.55. Book value is supposed to tell you if the company were to instantly close, how much money would they have to pay each shareholder for each of their shares of stock? Um, I understand the significance of book value, but I really don't believe that it works that way. And if you want to know why, I have a video in the channel called The Truth About Book Value. But in any event, their book value is decent at 30.55. And we see the PB ratio, 1.36. That's a ratio for the book value, how close it is to the current price of the stock. The beta, how volatile is this stock? If it's at one, it moves like the same as the market. If it's under one, it moves less than the market, not very volatile. If it's over one, it moves more than the market. This is 1.41. So it moves more than the market. Outstanding shares. There are 20.43 million outstanding shares of this stock. And of those outstanding shares, 2.66% belong to insiders, those who work in or are part of a company. 
and we have over 100% by institutions, large banks, and so forth. I don't know how Yahoo puts some at over 100%, but that's Yahoo. They make up the figures. Management. Mr. Jack D. Springer is the CEO and director of Malibu Boats. He was born in 1961, just to give you an idea of his age, and he was made interim CEO in May of 2009 and CEO in February of 2010. And the significance of that is, I showed you at the top, we're covering years 2019 through 2023, well, you could judge how the company went over those years and feel secure that the same man who was heading the helm headed the helm all five of those years. Malibu Boats is in the recreational vehicles industry and the consumer cyclical sector. So that's it for Malibu Boats, guys. Um, I rated this a three star. I feel that the profit margin is decent. It's not spectacular, but it's decent. Um, I like the return on equity, with the exception of that last year. I like their balance sheet. Um, the only thing I could say I would have problems with is that for two years they sold more shares. But on the three years where they bought back shares, they bought back significantly more than what they sold. So in any event, that's my analysis for Malibu Boats. You guys have a great night, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.